Hi everyone, this is an example of a redox stoichiometry problem. Here we go. What volume of 0 0.150 mole per liter tin 2 nitrate is needed to completely reduce 15 milliliters of a 0 0.150 mole per liter acidic potassium dichromate solution? We have a stoichiometry problem. Our first job is to come up with the net ionic equation. We're going to do that by following the five-step method, and the first step of which is make a list of all the substances that are present. We have tin 2 nitrate. A solution of tin 2 nitrate, it's implied because it has a concentration, it doesn't specifically have the word solution there, but it's absolutely implied that this is a solution. This is an ionic compound, so it's going to dissociate. We're going to put those ions into our list. Tin 2 ions and nitrate ions. We also have acidic potassium dichromate solution. Acidic It means we're going to have hydrogen ions in our list, potassium dichromate, it's going to dissociate. It's going to dissociate into potassium ions and dichromate ions. Because it's a solution, just like the tin 2 nitrate was a solution, we must also include water in our list. Step one, make a list. Step two, use the table in the data booklet to label all of the possible oxidizing and reducing agents. Tin 2 ions are a little bit strange. They show up on either side of that table. They are both an oxidizing and a reducing agent. We have hydrogen and nitrate ions together, we can find on the left-hand side of the table, they're an oxidizing agent. Hydrogen alone is an oxidizing agent. Potassium alone is also an oxidizing agent. Hydrogen and dichromate ions together are an oxidizing agent. And water is both. Step one, make a list. Step two, label all of the possible oxidizing and reducing agents. We have to search the table like crazy. We're still getting used to using that table. There's lots of things going on in this particular example. We need to find the strongest oxidizing agent. Out of all of these oxidizing agents, which one is highest up on the table? It's the combination of hydrogen ions and dichromate ions that are highest up on the table. For the strongest oxidizing agent, we're going to copy the half reaction as it appears in the data booklet. It is very common for acidic dichromate to be the strongest oxidizing agent. As soon as I see that, I feel confident that it's going to be the strongest oxidizing agent. I could possibly even skip the step of labeling all of the oxidizing agents. It's very common for acidic dichromate to be used in these styles of questions, and also acidic permanganate ions are going to show up a lot too. We have a couple reducing agents. Which one is the strongest one? It 
It's the tin 2 ions that are the strongest reducing agent. It was implied in the question that that was going to be the case anyways. Tin 2 nitrate is going to completely reduce the dichromate. It's implied. So we're going to find the tin 2 ions as a reducing agent in the data booklet and reverse that half reaction. The tin 2 ions are oxidized to produce tin 4 ions and 2 electrons. Step 1, make a list. Step 2, make all these labels, find the strongest oxidizing agent, copy the half reaction exactly as it appears from the data booklet, find the strongest reducing agent, reverse its half reaction from the data booklet. We need a reduction and an oxidation for our half reactions. Next, balance the electrons. We have 6. We have two. It feels a little bit redundant to say that I'm multiplying the first half reaction by one. Maybe I don't need to write that down, but maybe I do just to reassure myself that I'm showing all of my thought process. This one's two electrons, six. To multiply by three, we're going to now add the two half reactions together. These two, they don't have anything in common except for the electrons, which are going to cancel out, which helps a little bit. We rewrite the two half reactions, join them together, and we end up with a dichromate, 14 hydrogens, 3 tin 2 plus ions, 2 chrom chromium ions with a charge of 3 plus, 7 waters, and 3 of these tin 4 ions. This is a spontaneous reaction. It's implied by the question itself that there is a reaction. We could follow the spontaneity rules. And notice that the strongest oxidizing agent is higher up on the table of reduction half reactions than the reducing agent. We have a spontaneous reaction. There's quite a lot of work that goes into the process of even just coming up with the reaction. We haven't even got to the calculation yet. A reminder that our net ionic equation is balanced in a couple of different ways. The chemicals themselves balance. We have two chromiums. 14 hydrogens and 3 tins, as well as um, 7 oxygens on either side of the equation. We also have charge equality here. Now we can move on to the math. Find the moles. We're not specifically told the moles. We don't have a mass to do mass over molar mass. So we're going to use concentration times volume. Here's a volume, 15 milliliters. We're going to have to convert that into liters. Here's our concentration. That's where we're going to start. Concentration times volume will give us the moles. We're going to take that answer and multiply it by R over G. The R over G are going to come from not a coefficient in our balanced equation, because we have three chemicals that are involved. What we want to use are the values that we use to balance the electrons. That's why I'm taking the trouble, actually, to write down that I'm multiplying this equation by 1. I can see the number 1 on my page, and I'm going to use that. So what's required for us here is the volume of tin 2 nitrate. We're looking for something about the tin, which was a 3. That's required. What was given to us 
were these values that go along with the acidic dichromate. So here are R over G. is 3 over 1. Our final step is to divide by the concentration because we're looking for the volume. So here we're going to divide by the concentration, which was 0 0.150 moles. We're now going to calculate our answer, 0.75 times 0 0.015 times 3 over 1 divided by 0 0.150. Comes out to be 0 0.225. That's our raw answer. We can double check the significant digits. The values in the question all have three significant digits as does our answer, so that's really nice that we don't have to do an extra step there. And this was the, the volume that we found in liters. So there we have an example of a redox stoichiometry question. Step one, follow all of that process to arrive at the net ionic equation. A time saver is acidic dichromate. As soon as you see that mentioned in the problem, that's going to be the strongest oxidizing agent. Also be on the lookout for acidic permanganate. Get those half reactions. Those numbers that we're multiplying by, we're going to need that for our R over G. By moles, multiply by R over G. Do the appropriate operation at the end. Don't forget about significant digits and units. And I hope that helps.